everybody. Ready to make some art today? I am. I sure am. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody, welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today we're going to be making another painting or a whole bunch of them by another one of my very favorite artists, Takashi Murakami. Probably one of the top five most successful artists of all time. I mean, his net worth is over a hundred million dollars very commercially super super successful and also one of the rare artists to be commercially really successful and also critically uh successful he's been embraced by major museums and art collectors and represented by some of the most powerful art galleries in the world so somebody that has kind of broken many 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 barriers when it comes to uh, high fine art, if we would call it that, uh, by mixing what we would also call like low pop culture things and elevating them to high art. Something that Andy Warhol, someone he's very closely identified with, is was also very much known for as well. So let's dive right into it. I'm going to show you some things on the screen so we can kind of get started and uh, we can see that we're, oops, we've already seen that. So let's look at this. This is one of the images we're going to create today. Here's another image that we're going to work on today. And if this moves, you will be able to find all of those in this Dropbox folder. On There's a link for it down below in the video description. And here you'll see all of the classes all the way until the very last class of this course coming up in uh, the beginning of February. And then we're gonna jump on to a whole new wide world of, uh, of episodes and classes that we're gonna do after that. But um, before I speak too soon, let's finish what we're starting, right? So, um, so you can go into here where Murakami, click in here and you'll see a whole bunch of different files. So you'll see the, the images I just showed on the screen, right? So these are the color versions just taken from the web. And then I've also made a few versions that are black and white. So for instance, if we go back to this here, you will see this image. You'll see a slightly different one that I changed some of the colors very subtly with, right? So here's the Murakami's original. And then here's another ver totally different painting, but obviously using the same flower motif he's famous for. Then I've got a black and white version of that one. And then just like this one, I've also created a black and white version of that. So we are gonna, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of different tests today. Cause I've done this many times before and the results tend to vary. So I, I will mention right off the top, that if you want to do this absolutely perfectly, like as if you're a robot, then you should go to a place that has robots that can do it, right? That has a professional silk screening setup. You're planning on doing, you know, maybe five or more images and you want them to all look exactly the same, then go to a professional place that does it. Like I'll, sh I'll just show you right off the top here, a few versions of, of what I'm actually talking about. So for various different projects I've done, like this is a SpaceX t-shirt that I made from scratch, but not using the process we did today. I, I went to a company and I asked, I had a file on a USB stick and I asked them to print it on there. And it ended up costing something like $35 with the, uh, including the t-shirt. And it took them a couple of hours to do. You can see it's beautiful, nice and seamless here. Right, so it looks professional, right? So there's one version. Here's another one that's kind of similar. Um, this is for a, a different project I did. Another t-shirt, 
right? And they did a really nice job, but they're actually basically printing onto the shirt in this process anyway. I think the other one, they created a, a laminated thing and transferred onto the t-shirt. We're gonna use um, a couple of different materials like Mod Podge, all right? And so this is the image transfer medium that is the, the, the most important thing, but we can also do it with just regular Mod Podge, right? So this is the shiny, the gloss version, and this is the matte version. So if you have either of those, you can also do it with these materials. The main difference is that this has kind of a white, well, it has kind of a white color to it, so if you're, if you're gonna put something on white canvas or onto a white t-shirt, you won't see any difference with any of these. However, if you're gonna put something on a colored t-shirt, red, blue, green, black, then if you use this, you're gonna see kind of a white halo or kind of a white background to that image versus these, they'll be totally clear. And I'll show you that as we go here in a second, but those are some of the materials you want. Having a hair dryer, a sponge, possibly a um, iron, uh, some cardboard to put inside of your t If you're gonna use a t-shirt, and speaking of t-shirts, I'm gonna transfer an image or two or five onto a t-shirt. So, and I've got actually some colored t-shirts in the dryer right now. I just, um, put them in the wash to pre-shrink them so that they don't, you, you want your t-shirt, like an old t-shirt works really well. It's been in and out of the laundry machine a number of times. That's gonna work really well for transferring images on because the t-shirt is, is relatively stable. As everybody knows with fabric, if you get something and then you, it fits really great in the store, you take it home, you wash it, and then it shrinks a little bit, right? Um, assuming you haven't uh, just had Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> that could be one of the reasons why it shrank. But um, if you sh shrink it, then there's less likelihood of the image kind of uh, shifting on the uh, shrinking or expanding on that surface. Anyway, so let's jump. I just want a couple things here. Um, there is a Facebook group that is building day by day of people who are taking this class or who have taken this class or other classes that I've taught who are uploading images every day. You can see here's a whole bunch of the new paintings based on our most recent class just the other day by on where we recreated the very famous Girl with a Pearl Earring by Vermeer. And so um, I'm not gonna look at them right now. I have, I have seen them, but um, we're gonna do a special episode where I, t I talk about each one of them in depth. So I would strongly encourage you if you're if you're watching me right now and you're gonna paint along with me to join the group, it's super supportive. You get to see all the really cool artwork everybody else has been doing and the results that they've had positive and some of the struggles that people are going through. Um, sometimes, well, often people do a better job than I'm doing, which makes me super excited because that means I must be doing something right to be able to show you guys how to do something well enough that you could do it better than me. That's great. And then sometimes, you know, maybe I, missed a step or I've been doing some of these things so long that I forget uh, to explain something and that's a great place where you can get some feedback from myself and other people. So specifically the artist we're talking about today Takashi Murakami here's what he looks like he, there's a, we'll see a few other photographs where he's dressed up in all sorts of crazy costumes he, he I've I uh, I've never met him, I've been in the same room with him a, a number of times, but I've never spoken to him directly. But he does seem like a very, very playful person, as we'll see in uh, some of the images we look at shortly. He is, um, he's a Japanese artist, he's what, 58, born 1962, still alive and very, very well. He is, let me see, um, I won't go spend too much time on his background here. We'll talk about Super Flat as we go. He is most well known for his collaborations with Louis Vuitton. And we'll see, I'm gonna, I'll show you some images here shortly about that. Because basically, Louis Vuitton has been around for 150 years, um, almost 200 years really. And obviously a very well established luxury brand of bags and uh, 
what else? What else do they sell? Scarves, maybe? Maybe sh they make shoes, Louis Vuitton? Um, and anyway, in 2002, let's actually, let's, let's go right to it. Well, here's some of images of, of his art. But if you've ever seen any of these handbags or knockoffs of these handbags, you have seen a Takashi Murakami artwork. Whether you knew it or not at the time, he is the one who's responsible for these particular images. Now, some of these are the original brand logo, but he mixed them up, remixed them, and subsequently, Louis Vuitton, from, I think, 2000, around the time he began collaborating uh, with Louis Vuitton, became the most powerful luxury brand in the world, right? So no small feat. Obviously, it benefited both Murakami and Louis Vuitton because both of them have gone on to make huge amounts of money. And again, what's fascinating about him is how he has managed to maintain his, his sort of critical respect within the art community. Okay, remember I said he's a funny, fun guy, right? So here's a whole bunch of crazy pictures. Him, he likes dressing up. He, ha he obviously collaborating with Louis Vuitton is uh, interested in fashion and clothing. So again, here's him dressed up <laughs> in these wild outfits. He's a big fan of color, obviously. And if we just look at his artwork again, one of the things you'll notice is, is the sort of overwhelming amount of detail, right? Just tons and tons, like, I mean, look at all of these kind of little tiny dots these are, I think this is actually made up of a whole bunch of little tiny images overlapping one another. Same sort of thing with these kind of flowers. So it's this kind of pattern that uh, kind of can repeat endlessly and then not even behave as well as like a normal pattern would be. Like with a whole bunch of kind of more chaotic but still a sense of, of balance in some weird way. I've seen a number of his exhibitions, I've, um, and a lot of his work tends to be really big as well. So, kind of entering into these large spaces that are just over, they're filled to the ceilings, floor to ceilings, wall to wall, with images that have been printed out. And so, also using industrial processes to reproduce the work rather than just hand painting everything. Let me see. Here's his company. Um, Kai Kai Kiki, which is also re makes reproductions of other artists' work. Uh, let me see. Um, they have different products you can buy on here out of curiosity. So here's, look at the size of some of these artworks that he's created. So these, I believe, are hand-painted onto canvas. So he would hire a whole group of people to help him make art like that. Um, no, 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 no. Let me see. Here's another website that features his work. Uh, Gagosian Gallery is arguably the most powerful art gallery in the world, or within the, the, the top handful of them. And Gagosian uh, represents him, so you can also, if you have um, a couple of million dollars laying around that you're not interested in donating to me, well, you could certainly spend them on some uh, authentic Takashi Murakami artwork. So, uh, let me see. I'll get into the super flat as we go here. Here's his Instagram. He's also very well known for collaborating with different uh, musicians and rappers. Billie Eilish he made a music video for Kanye West. So, he is you know, a major, major player in contemporary art today. So, uh, what was this here? Uh, and of course, just like any uh, respectable <laughs> contemporary uh, artist, musician, he is, every once in a while, has a public feud with somebody. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and Deborah says, kind of like Riley hiring people to do the work. Absolutely. And if you think about it as, and this is a, maybe a controversial thing to say, but artists are like small businesses and 
you know, there's some businesses that are very happy to stay small, like your local bakery, the local coffee shop. And then, of course, there are many examples of coffee shops scaling their business up dramatically, like Starbucks, obviously, right? So you could think of artists sort of having that same quandary or opportunity to whether to stay small or to expand as the demand grows, right? Are you going to make only a small number of paintings but charge increasingly more amounts of money? Or are you going to start asking people to help you make more work so that you can gradually increase the amount of money or you can be like Murakami, do both. Increase the prices and increase the amount of people helping you and the number of artworks you're cranking out. So. Let me see, where should we begin? Because I want to do a whole bunch of different things. And I'm going to use this class to, to test a, f a bunch of different methods. Because as I said, I've done this many times before, but I've always been curious to see what would happen if we tried a few different things. So, um, well, actually, let me show you some of the results that I've had in the past. So... This one, this is an example of a t-shirt that I made. And I took an image of Spider-Man and transferred it onto the canvas. Now, if I, or onto the t-shirt, which is like a canvas, right? And I believe this, if I'm not mistaken, I think what I used for this was just the Mod Podge. I believe, because it looks, I don't see any it could it's hard to say whether which one I use here because it's white on white so we can't see any difference so this is one example of a t-shirt uh, I've subsequently washed it many times so obviously you see it's starting to fall apart a little bit there if there's probably if there's a few different ways and we'll talk about how to preserve them better than this but personally, I really like this look. Same thing here. Anybody who's old enough uh, in Canadian would recognize this brand, the Woodward's brand. And so this is done, this is definitely done with the Mod Podge photo transfer medium because we see this white, uh, not only outline, but underneath the image. And both of these were done just using photocopies. The one thing that is important to, to remember is that when you take an image, especially if it's got words on it, you want the words to be backwards on your photocopy because when we transfer it, we're gonna put it upside down and we're seeing sort of the back side of an image. So there's a few examples of some t-shirts that were done using this process. Here's a f another example. Uh, this is on a pair of, of old jeans, right? And you can see here, this is the version using the transfer medium. Again, I put them after doing this, I throw it in the wash and let it really, you know, do it. Uh, just because I want to see what it looks like after having gone in and out of the wash a number of times. You can see again that the image starts to fall apart a little bit. Jeans are probably the worst type of fabric to do any kind of transfer on just because they're not as absorbent as a t-shirt or, or a lot of other materials and that's off that's kind of why we like jeans right because they kind they hold they can resist getting dirty as much as possible now here is a version that i definitely used the regular mod podge on so can, and it's you barely see it but this is a vancouver canucks hockey team logo that was on there but you can see that there's no white outline at all. It's 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 uh, clear, right? We could see all the way through to the to the jeans in behind. So that's was using Mod Podge, the regular stuff that you may already have had from some of our previous classes. So let's just maybe it's worth just seeing these kind of things side by side here, and the difference. All right. So both of these started in the same way that we're gonna do here in a minute, but they get different results, right? One being clear, one having a white background to it. Okay, so let's, um, 
let's get started here. So, um, I don't need my glazing liquid. That was from a couple of days ago. Now, I'm going to take some canvases, some brand new canvases, ones that I have not put any gesso on, just because this, it's, I don't think the gesso is going to help much, and I also, I, I'm of two minds about this, and this I could certainly, I'm open to testing it. Part of me also wonders if the gesso might, uh, may not help. It, I'm not sure if it, it, it couldn't, it could be impeding the, the process a little bit. So, but anyway. Okay. So here, here's a bunch of prints that I got from the uh, local UPS store, right? I just went there with a USB stick. I printed out the documents that I showed there on the Dropbox folder. And so here is what we have. I asked them to print out two versions of the color ones, right? So there's two of this. Here's two of this, right? Remember, they're just slightly different. You can see that there's this one's yellow, this one's orange. Got blue and pink versus all three of these are the same. So we have some colored versions. And then I also asked this at the store to print out the black and white ones in using the color printer or Xerox machine they have. So it's basically, so the different, and then also print out the black and white ones using their black and white printer because I also wanted to test this out because I'm, I'm always just curious of the difference. The, the, this, the main difference with the color one is the paper is slightly thicker and it's got a little bit of a gloss quality. I don't know if you can let me see it better on this side. See how the right one is a little bit shinier? So I'm, I'm gonna use a bunch of these because I'm curious to see what effect, if any, these different materials have on this process. So you can um, you can play along with me, and, and you can. There's a few that I know that work really well, so you can do those. And if you want to just sort of out of curiosity see if there's another process that works a little bit better, you can do that. Okay, um, people, <laughs> Deborah says, Woodward's reminds me of my hippie youth. And Donna says, I guess uh, that means we're around the same age. Um, I remember going to Vancouver to look at the Woodward's Christmas days. And we used to put those magnets on my beetle. Oh, yeah, cool. So, uh, you can do this with any any image. You can use images you find on the web. You can use your own images. I will say that photographs can be, like if you take a photograph of yourself and you, you print it out, or and then I, even better if you can make a photocopy of that printout. I'll try some with my inkjet printer as well, and we'll see what results we get there. Because um, it's, yeah, anyway, so. What's the first thing that I want to do here? So I've shown I've shown you how to take a picture and to glue it face up using Mod Podge onto a canvas, right? So what we see here is this is from our our class just a couple days ago. And if you remember, I, I printed out this Vermeer image and then I trimmed it and then I glued it down onto the canvas using the Mod Podge. And there was also a little bit of wrinkles that happened. Subsequently, what I did is I actually sanded it a little bit. I took some sandpaper and I gave it a, a light sanding because there was a few areas, remember, 
I was a little bit impatient. I'm doing it live here. So some of it hadn't quite dried and I touched my fingers around there. What I did is I gave it a sanding and then I applied another coat of the Mod Podge over it again. And then I let that dry overnight and then I put another coat over it again, all in an effort to try to reduce this edge here. So I could still feel it a little bit, but I'm just gonna give it another quick little sanding. Okay. So one thing the sanding does is it's, I'm attempting to kind of smooth out the transitions again between that and it also gives a little bit of a tooth back onto the canvas so that other paint just has a little bit, I mean paint will, any kind of acrylic will stick to other acrylic usually quite well. But a little bit of sanding won't hurt, it just gives, again we call it like a tooth, something for the paint to kind of grip onto. So. Um, and then any kind of little bumps on there. Uh, I do find, and this is something we noticed last class too, that if we just let, like some of the, you'll see bubbles start to form. And I, again, I was really impatient and I'm poking at them and using an X-Acto knife to try to let air out of them. And that seemed to kind of make the problem worse. I've subsequently just, this one also had some of that happening. I just let it dry overnight and the bubbles just disappeared. Right, so I think the, the best action is just to <laughs> do nothing. But anyway, so the reason I'm showing you this is I have, we've already sh shown you how to take an image and then just to glue it onto the canvas, just like that. And then you can paint on it as you wish, right? What we're gonna do today is we're gonna do something a little bit different. So this makes perfect sense, you can use it I, I still want to finish this. I might do this in the next couple days or on the weekend, is to do the glazing method on top of this image. Because I think it'll be kind of interesting for you to see how that works. Um, and it, it sort of also ensures that the, 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 the structure of the image, the underdrawing is gonna be perfect, right? You're not, their face doesn't start to look weird. The nose doesn't get too long or too short because you're literally working on top of a facsimile of the image, right? So that, if you were to, so this would be a great method to use if you wanted to take a picture of your uh, brother, sister, grandma, aunt, uncle, your dog, transfer it onto the canvas, and then paint over top of it. This would be my recommended method. As long as you don't mind a little bit of a ridge around, and again, you could obviously just use the full size piece of paper. You put a frame on it, no one would ever know that there was a piece of paper on it. Now, we're gonna do the, the sort of the opposite way of doing this in which we're going to transfer the image rather than glue the image onto the canvas, right? So, I'll, so we'll see what the, the distinction is. One. The, the gluing the image is you take the, this picture and using Mod Podge, you, you literally glue this piece of paper onto the canvas. Transferring, however, is we, we're gonna put some Mod Podge onto the canvas, put the paper onto it, and then we're gonna let that dry, and then we're gonna remove the paper from the canvas so that literally all that's remaining is the image that was on the paper. So we're literally transferring, pulling that image off the paper and onto the canvas, t-shirt, jacket, socks, backpack, tote bag, or whatever else you wanna put on there. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So, as I said, I wanna show a few different methods on how to do this. And, um, and, and again, this, you should also think when you're doing this method that it's, it is, it's going to cre it creates a particular look. If you want it to be nice and seamless and perfect, then just glue the paper directly to the canvas. When you transfer the image, 
it, it has a particular kind of look of like an aged patina kind of quality. So, um, let me think. I'm also gonna do some on some wood as well so that you can see how this transfer works on some wood. So lots of different kinds of things. Now, let's try... Where did this image go? Do I have a piece of paper just vanish into thin air here? Am I losing my mind? Is it... S oh, no? Okay. I could have sworn... I know I had one because I... Okay, I had these. <laughs> Do I have a piece of... Hmm, I wonder if they forgot to... I could swear that I had the colored version of that somewhere. That's, that is insane. I'm sure I will find it sort of on the floor here somewhere later on, right? Ah, okay. That is gonna drive me absolutely bonkers. No, it's here, aha. Don't you hate that when that happens? You know something is around here. It's stuck to these. Hmm. Okay, dokie then. Well. You know what? I've primed. I think actually what I'm going to do for this demonstration is I've got a bunch of these small canvases. Remember I, we've often at the end of class and I've got a, a bunch of extra paint left over on my palette. I just kind of spread them out onto some smaller panels like this because in my infinite wisdom I'm <laughs> thinking maybe we can use this for something, right? So here we've got these. This will be perfect, a perfect way to kind of start here. So with these small little canvases, I'm just going to, we'll do a few different things. How about, I'm gonna cut out some of these small images. So this one here, my scissors. So I'm going to cut out a few of these. So th these, maybe we'll, we'll try a few different ones, versions here. So this is the kind of basically the black and white photocopied version. the color Xerox version. Even though it's in black and white. And then let's take a couple So, what you can do is you could trim all the way around, and you could trim in uh, where the color actually is. Like, or so you could like you could go right up to the, you know, you, you could trim. In here, I'm just sort of making a little circle, almost like this is a a badge or a button or something, right? 
So we'll do one of those. Gonna trim a whole bunch of these. So if you wanted, if you wanted, if you don't have any Mod Podge at all, you could easily take some carbon paper and transfer this image onto your carbon paper, and then you'd have this pattern there and you're ready to paint. So those of you that are at, that, that don't have those, you know, any Mod Podge around, you're, you're welcome to kind of use a slightly different process in order to kind of get started. So I'm going to make a little, uh, some notes here so that I can remember what is what on this page. Um, an important aspect of being an artist is learning to deal with the unexpected and uh, your happy accidents as Bob Ross likes to say I actually think that's a really good um, life lesson that art teaches us is that things you know often don't go our way and yet it doesn't mean that all is lost right like just because you something happens in the studio your paintbrush falls in the middle of your painting or the canvas falls off the easel and paint gets onto it doesn't mean that, it, that the painting is ruined it might be an opportunity so had I had my color Xerox here, I, I would have done a slightly different series of projects, and I, I would have forgotten about these colored canvases. Okay. So, again, you could be a little bit more refined than I am. Which color should we use? How about we do uh, blue and red? Or... I could do black, but um, blue and yellow. I feel like I like the blue. How about yellow? A little bit brighter of a color here. So, what I'm going to do is I'll show you. Can I can I fit three on here? I can get rid of the black too. Let's move these out of the way. So we'll start here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna because all this takes time to dry. I'm gonna start a whole bunch of different things. We'll let them dry. I do have my hair dryer, which can help speed the process up. But this will will kind of get us going. Should they be like this? Let's like it like this format. I think. Okay. So we're gonna need. Let's say we'll put the color in the center. So these are my color Xeroxes. And then we'll put okay so people can help remind me of what's what's what here um, I'm I'll also write down some notes on the back of these canvases right so get my sharpie here so we will have let's say we put one up here are going to go right here and here. 
So just taking a little bit of an extra moment to make a note for myself like that is really, really helpful because I might remember now, I might remember, I might be able to remember what I did an hour or two from now if I'm really lucky, but I'm getting older and my, my brain is getting mushier as air by the day. But I certainly won't remember what I did a year or so later, which is the case with those t-shirts and I didn't make a note here like that. So now let's use a few of these different materials. How much, there's still a little bit left in there we can use. Now there's different ways that you can apply Mod Podge. You can use foam brushes. I think they recommend you use a foam brush because you're going to get the most even application of Mod Podge possible. There'll be as little uh, brush strokes in there, I, I, which I would agree with. I think that that is, if you have it, it it's a great idea. I realized this as I was getting set up that I don't have any foam brushes here, even though this one comes with a, a brush because I've got all that stuff locked away on campus, which I said I haven't been back there in uh, a long time. The other thing that I'm going to use is just an old magazine. So I'm going to use this for gluing. I think this is this is my own, I don't, I don't know, just a method that I've come upon. You can certainly use an old newspaper. You can see I use them all the time and they get splatters and then I just save these. But what I like about using a magazine is I can glue something down. I've got, as you'll see here in a second, and then I can just turn the page and then I've got a nice fresh place for doing any gluing. So on the blue one, on this one here, I'm just gonna use the photo transfer medium. So we're gonna see how that works on the blue. Actually, let's even just write a note again for ourselves. Okay. Um, and you know what? Let's just do this to this one as well. I'm like, oh, I'll be able to remember because I'll have both of them side by side and This is great. I'm all set up to do this the way that I've always wanted to do it. I think it will be the most instructive for everybody else as well. So, and maybe if there's time later on, I'll use my inkjet printer and we can try this all over again. So I got a few more of those panels. So this, again, just before I even get started, this is just a regular canvas. I've put just some extra paint that I had at the end of the session on here to... to so there's nothing special about it. You could do this right now with the canvas if you want to color it uh, to get it started, or as opposed to just using white, it's up to you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, so one thing to think about if you're gonna use this is you have to be a little bit more careful than if you're gonna, if you're going to use the, uh, the regular Mod Podge, just because it leaves a, a bit of a white outline, so you want to just be a little bit um, uh, um, patient with your application. And then you have to find your um, your palette. Why? I feel like I'm super disorganized. I spent all this time getting myself organized and then I can't find anything. I think that means it's time for a sip of tea. <sighs> okay, so. Um, yeah, 
looking for my pallet. Okay. I can't, I think it might, hopefully it's not in the sink, maybe? Okay. So let's put some of the transfer medium into the pallet here. You can see how much I put down there. It doesn't have to be too much. I'm gonna use a bunch of it, so I'm sort of getting myself prepped. So this one here is the photocopy. Let's start, we'll go up from the top. I always find it just easier to work down like a printer. Okay, so what we've done in the past is we've put stuff on the back and then glued it onto something, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to put it on the front and then glue it down that way. So let's get some of this Mod Podge on here. Okay. I'm going to put a, a good amount on. Your fingers are going to get dirty. So just before you, you lose all your mind, just keep that in mind. So it's kind of holding its space there a little bit as I get this in. Okay. There's a little hair from the brush. That's a good amount on there. I have seen some people claim that you want to le make a layer just like this and then leave it and let it dry and then do it again. Um, I don't know if that... I could see it, it working, and I think as you see, it, it may help. Okay, so now I've got this. I've pulled it off. You could also use a pair of tweezers like this to help you. It's a little bit tricky to uh, now flip this. Oh, I see I got some of my fingers and we'll just put this up here. And I can still see the image a little bit through the paper to help align it. Now, I'm just gonna press this down here here so i want to be again this is essentially think of this as white paint so I, I i don't mind if i get some on the back here you see how little bits bubbling out on the side that's okay but i just don't want to smudge it because then i'll get a white streak of paint running along the side of the picture here I'm just going to burnish this down. I'm not even pressing that hard. The goal is not to kind of smoosh it down like um, a photocopy, right? We're, the, the goal is to try to get this to be down and to avoid as many bubbles underneath as possible. So I'm just making sure to see if I can do that well enough. Now, if you do have a little bit kind of poking out on the edge here, one option would be to take a rag, and this is, a, it looks dirty, but I assure you it's nice and drying, is just to kind of take a rag and then try to clean it up. A little bit. Not too bad. Okay, so there's one. Okay, so let's do this again. We got one down. That was our color photocopy, a black and white using a color photocopier. Now let's do it again with the color here. So 
So also, if you had the, uh, if you were able to print out the big color image on your printer, um, which I again I have somewhere here, but it's decided it was too afraid to to make an appearance today, then you can just apply that onto a larger canvas, which is what I was planning on doing for today. But. Okay. Looks like it did a pretty good job of getting it all over everywhere. Okay. Make sure my finger is about as clean as possible. If you're looking at this and you're like, wow, this looks like it's a little bit too technical or whatever, when we use the, the regular Mod Podge, maybe I should have used that to start because... It's, a it's way more forgiving than this. Here. My, my only concern, like when I'm putting this down, I, I don't mind if I get paint on my fingers or even if I get a little bit on the background. My main concern is not taking too much of the, the Mod Podge off of, this, of the surface here because that is the glue that is literally going to bind the image onto this piece of paper. So that's my my only reason for being a little bit. It's not a big deal. I'm maybe I'm being a little bit more overly cautious than you need to be. But I'm also trying to demonstrate it to get the best possible results I can for our demonstration purposes, right? I'm <laughs> so that I don't look like a fool. <clears throat> Although I, I have no problem doing that um, regularly any other time anyway. Um, okay. So now this is just the 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 black and white photocopy. So I'm I'm putting a fair it's not super thick but it's certainly not a thin layer. Right? It's there's um, it's, it's, I, like, I really want to make sure there's enough on here. Okay. So you can see I can kind of just turn it a little bit. My positioning isn't fantastic, but good enough for government work, as my grandfather always used to say. So My, one of my favorite all-time... He probably only said it once. But I, it was one of those things as a, as a young kid it always stuck with me. I always thought that... Would, I think because when I was younger, I was like, I don't... What, what does that even mean, Grandpa? Oh, nothing. You'll find out. My grandfather, on my dad's side, was a teacher and principal for most of his life, as well as a professional baseball player. So other things you may notice also right off the top is look at the difference in the thickness of the paper. So 
This is the, the thinner Xerox paper in the black and white Xerox machine. So we can see the image coming through quite clearly. It do, it's not normally that transparent, right? So here's another, this is the same paper. The difference is, is as the, the, the water in the paint starts to have its effect, it starts making that paper a little bit more transparent. So I'm just tapping all of this down. Okay. So we're going to let this sit for as long as possible, like uh, ideally overnight or something if you can. Okay, so I have all this extra here. I'm going to, let's say, I'm going to clean this off my brush and we're going to use the other Mod Podge for this next step here. <laughs> Donna says, my son and I were putting up pictures one day and I said that. And your son's like, what does that mean? Oh, you'll... One day, one day. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so... Now I need another... Well, we can just use this same one. So this is just the the big jar of Mod Podge that I have. And you know, just the other day I threw out a whole bunch of of old lids because I was like, ah, I'm never gonna use these things. And then here I am today thinking, wouldn't it be handy if I had a few little lids? Laying around. Okay, I'm just going to use the inside of this cup. Hmm. I probably didn't need to put so much in there, Michael, but. Okay. A little, a little uh, tea break here. Also, there, there's also. A, there's not only because the clothes were in the dryer, but. I, um, I would recommend that you do a few tests like this before you move on to t-shirts and backpacks, jeans, tote bags, and all that. Because it, it's one of these things that I can blab on and, and, and talk about how it's done, but until you actually do it, there's a bit of a learning curve. It's not huge, but having something that you can kind of test it out, and you're like, oh, okay, now I feel comfortable, now I can use it on that because I've had people come to class. I, the, mo the last time I did this, I had somebody come to class, and they had their like a you know a brand new what was it uh, like a really nice like a hoodie, and they wanted to put an image right on on the back like really big, and I was like, well, we should try on a canvas just to get the method. Oh no, I'm totally confident. Let's just and I'm like, okay, and it came out okay, but. I just have to be, well, you know, but, you know, if somebody's really uh, set on doing something, what can you do, right? Okay, so now we're going to use the, I should have started with the, this one because it's so much more forgiving. So let's see, let's, this is the photocopy one here, or the color Xerox. So here's, this is the, the matte Mod Podge. There's no reason why I'm using matte over anything else um, other than I just always tend to prefer it. We could, I could do, in the interest of scientific research, we could also do one with uh, some gloss here. So you can see I'm putting a, like a good amount on here. I've also seen some people say what you should do is you should put some on this surface as well. So that they're both covered in paint. So 
So now here, I can put this down, and assuming I don't mind a little bit of, like, there's this is going to dry clear, right? So if I take this and smudge it, and I got a little bit of a thing outside, it's not going to, that's barely going to be noticeable. Same thing if I was to do this on clothes, right? See, so I just, you can see I'm, I'm much more like a loosey-goosey doing this, because I, at the very end of the day, if I've got little areas I'm not happy with, I can just go over top of the whole thing with Mod Podge and seal it in and it would look like it was always there to begin with. So as I do this, I'm always just trying to kind of help by pushing any big wrinkles away from the center. And there we go. And let's do the same thing here. One thing I found with like inkjet is sometimes when you do this, it uh, causes the the ink to run a little bit when it gets some a water-based fluid on it like this so somebody kind of keep in mind if you're going to use inkjet to try not to do too much brushing of the mod podge on the surface otherwise you might get some smudging and smearing of the actual printing printed ink Okay. Alright, so a big blob came out on there. I'm not too worried about that. Again, it's it's also it's a fine line between putting too much and too little. As you'll see, both can have too much will cause certain kinds of things to happen, too little will cause certain things to happen. All right, you see there's this extra on the side here. Don't put anything on the back. That's important. But I don't mind if this kind of spreads out. In fact, I'll just, just because I can do this, you can see, we'll see that there's, there's no consequences for the, this to happen on, on this surface, right? Okay, and one more. Like this. Oh, you can't see. Duh. So this is the black and white Xerox. Yo 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 yo. So today's, does anybody ever watch America's Test Kitchen on PBS? I love that show where they, they take, they make like 200 different brownies, or take 200 different brownie recipes and try to make like the best brownie recipe ever. Or they try a whole bunch of, that's, I've, a lot of the kitchen equipment we have, like uh, knives and uh, cast iron skillets and stuff is stuff that I've bought after watching those episodes where I'm like because I'll test every single well not every single one of them but you know the most commonly found ones and um, like it's super interesting like they'll just you know take you know, again like a brownie recipe and, and they'll you know make some that don't even have chocolate in them because some grandma in Tennessee has a secret one that, you know, uses, I don't know, almond butter or something, you know, whatever, instead, right? And you're like, what? That can't work. And then at the end, they're like, you know, after doing all this, we found the almond paste, you know, is just as delicious as, as chocolate in the brownie. Who would have known? Okay. 
So great. So you see, this is my again. I've got I've glued a couple pages in here. This is a really nice, easy way to clean up, so you don't have all sorts of, of stuff kind of scattered around to to uh, um, in your cleaning process, right? Um, okay. So here's this is the one using just before we, we move on. We'll go this view, this here, and this here. Almost kind of, I didn't even think about the yellow. <laughs> yellow and yellow, and here and here. So I'm gonna set these to let them dry for a little bit. I could blast them with the hair dryer, but because there's the paper on this side, the the, the hair dryer is not going to have as much. It, it helps, but it's it's um, you know it's just not. You're you're have to like you're sort of like heating up that paper in order to. Okay, so I think I've got these T-shirts just finished in the dryer so I'm gonna mute my microphone Okay, so I've got a bunch of t-shirts here. These were, I think I even saved the, just in case, just, it's also just kind of helpful for people to see what, exactly what materials I'm using. So like here's, you know, Fruit of the Loom. You know, I think I got these for like, I got them at a, um, like a hardware store that, you know, just sells like cheap clothes for guys out working and, and women and people who don't identify with any gender at all. Right. So, um, I think they're, you know, they're these cheap t-shirts that were like, I don't know, three or $4 a piece. There's, it shouldn't be any difference between doing this on a expensive t-shirt or a uh, cheap t-shirt. I don't, I can't imagine there being. So I've got a gray one. Got a red one. And a green one supposed to be green. It looks kind of blue on the screen, doesn't it? Um, okay. So, there's a thinking of putting an image like this on one of them. Which one does it work best on? And I can do them on a few of them. It doesn't matter, but I got red, green, Interesting. Um, kind of like that on the green one. It seems to really pop. So let's let's do the green one now. Before I even do this, before I even get the T-shirt ready, we want to deal with this image. And I can. You know, just like the, what I previously did, I just kind of created a circle around here. I could do that, or I could try to trim it a little bit. Uh, 
Um, let's just see. I kind of like to... What would it look like if I was... To... Now, because I... this would be a little bit sloppy if I just did it as a circle here, I think, right? So I think... Should I bother trimming in this whole thing? <clears throat> well, the difference... Yeah, let's do that. It's like... Too much... Too much thinking and too little action. It's a little bit of a time-consuming process because it... <laughs> the uh, paper time to dry are the previous ones that I've gessoed. doing that. Let's I'm gonna transfer this onto here so we can set that this to dry as well. So So I've got this piece of paper out. Out. Ah, did it on the wrong side. Sometimes I do this. Okay. So this is okay. This we'll see. It's not the end all for this process. It's not ideal. But uh, I don't. I've, I've done this before, and it's okay. So just hope that paint doesn't uh, dry. In fact, let's keep this off here for a second. Let's do it right on here. Remember, I I, I really do think I should retitle the show "What Not to Do with Michael Murkowski," and demonstrating all of the ways that you can. do a project incorrectly. So this is just the canvas itself, covering it really well with some Mod Podge, really quickly. Edge to edge. Just really saturating it, getting... You want every little bit of this piece of paper covered. Okay. You can see a little bit of the paper tore off as I did that. It doesn't matter if it's up or upside down or, or what. Let's put this. Upside down, right? So you saw this image here. Okay. And 
And this is on the thinner photocopier paper as well. So it may wrinkle a little bit more than I might like. But okay. So I just really want to make sure that there's I don't mind if there's little bumps because I hopefully that's just accumulation of paint. I really just want to make sure I don't have any like here's a bit of an air bubble. Can you see that? And can you see how I'm sort of pushing it out to the edge of the paper? That was a good example. I don't know if I got captured on camera, but I saw it. So I can even hear it popping as the as I squeeze some of these bubbles out. You, can, so you hear this like a little snapping sound, like like a bubble popping. It sounds a little bit more to me like a, an elastic band kind of. think I'd be able to capture that sound because I got the furnace cranked up here so looks good okay I should have probably maybe done this first but life is full of coulda shoulda wouldas right so again look how it's I don't know if you can see on here it's kind of messy you can see how that gloss that's all just little bits from my fingers and when I accidentally put the, the Mod Podge on the back for some unknown reason, wasn't quite thinking clearly <laughs> at the time. So I'm just gonna let this also dry. And then we'll work on that, okay. Um. So I'm just trying to get my fingers to be as kind of clean as possible. One thing, when I'm, whenever I'm using paint, right, and if you just rub your hands long enough, the paint will dry. Uh, you, it kind of spreads the paint out, helps it dry a little bit faster, because I don't want to transfer any of this glue accidentally onto the surface. photo transfer medium. We'll do one using the, the Mod Podge. We'll see what kind of results we get. I, I've often found color images are less successful than black and white um, when people bring in their own images and I'm never quite exactly sure how people are getting their images if it's just a photocopy or printer at home or they're taking it to a place like the UPS store which has a much more advanced printer Cool. 
So we got one down. I'm not concerned. Like, you see there's a little bit of white on these edges. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, because I'm going to use some of the white paint anyway. And the white of the, the paper is going to disappear entirely. So it's really only the text. The only reason why I didn't want the halo is because I don't want white paint as a circle around this image, as, as you'll see here shortly. Um, okay. Let's make sure this table is clean. So we're going to put this right in the middle of this t-shirt. And a big part of this is just lining it up properly. So to help, let me see, let's just zoom out. What I, I was just doing there was trying to make sure that, let's say, that this is, I'm looking at the t-shirt straight on. That I'm not looking, you know, sometimes if the t-shirt the could be a little bit skewed. I want this image to be as close to the center as possible. Before I go too much further, so I've got a piece of cardboard that is going to be, the reason why I'm going to put this inside the t-shirt is to prevent the Mod Podge from soaking through and going all the way to the back side and then I've got, you know, the, it, the that paint going through the t-shirt, then I got this weird stain on the back of the shirt. I, you know, you, you'd be able to pull the t-shirt fabric apart well enough so that you could wear it, but you might have this weird kind of ghost image on that other side. Okay. So I got all these little, little things on my fingers here. Let's try to get as much of that off. I could go wash my hands, but uh, let's try to do this without. I'm sure the famous last words. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm going to. Make a little mark on here because I want to find out where uh, the I'm holding this up so that I can find so so I don't put it on accidentally crooked, right? So that helps me know that it's going to be straight. Okay. So it looks like something like that would do well. Um, you could, if you wanted, if you were really kind of, you want to be perfect, you could use, let's say, a pencil. Let's just see. Uh, doesn't seem to. That doesn't work very well. We could use a bit of tape. Let's see, I put something like this here. Sure, I've got this perfectly centered. I got a lot of stuff all over this table. You also want to think, ideally, when you put something on a shirt, you kind of want it to be a little bit higher on the body rather than right on the belly. <laughs> so I think that's pretty good. In fact, let's go to where's one of my previous shirts that I was thinking. Take a look at when I went and got this done professionally. You can 
could see how close it is to the collar. All right, let's just see that. Let's look at that one. That one. So that looks like it's pretty good, just on instinct. It's okay if it's slightly off, right? We're not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just, and I'm leaving a little bit of a gap here purposefully so that people are happy with this. I've, I've learned over the years that the more prep I can do before I actually do something, the easier it is later. I, I've learned lots and lots of hard lessons over the years. So, okay, this one will use the photo transfer medium. Um, and we'll see how well that works. When I use the photo transfer medium for this, Assuming I do a pretty good job, I won't really have, I might have a little bit of white outline ultimately around here. Um, if I if I wanted, right? And I can always go back later on with a brush and touch up some of that stuff too, so. Um, okay. So let's get that medium out. Donna says likes the red. Okay, we'll use the red for the other. I probably shouldn't do this right on the shirt. Duh. Okay. Um, I'm not going to move this because I've got it nicely placed. So let's just take some newspaper. Put that down. And then now we'll squeeze this out. about tea in all seriousness for but when I'm painting is it just it's like a little break there's nothing I can't it's hard to you know um, talk or do anything else while I'm having my tea so it forces me to take a bit of a, of a mini break okay make sure I don't have any stray hairs in there and let's do this What's actually kind of nice about me being able to film this is we'll see later on where what parts of this picture transferred best and how if if me applying different thicknesses in different areas ultimately had any effect whatsoever or not. Because we'll just have we can just play back the video and go, ah, oh, it looked like 
let's say the the blue down here because I put a big glob of it there that turned out really well versus I don't know, the orange or whatever it's much thinner and clearly that was not as effective that even happen there? How did I miss that corner up that weird? You see how I missed this weird little corner? Hmm. The world is full of surprises. This is, I, I was last night laying in bed thinking, I should remember to bring the, the tweezers with me to class. Okay. Now I was going to put a little bit of extra underneath where I was just holding it, but if we can, ah, uh, it'll be fine. Just. it down. I'm not trying to move this paint away. You know, and I, and I don't really want it to, to bulge out on the ends. But I do want it to try to see, like, because there's black lines here, I do want those black lines to adhere so once so I'm, right now I'm just tapping it down helping to get it in place and it's already starting to the, the paint to kind of start to soak through into the fabric. So it's already starting to do its work. I'm just carefully going around these edges. See, there's a little bit of paint scooted out there and I smudge it a bit. Not such a problem. So really what I'm trying to do is make sure all these edges. Oh, see, there's a little bit of paint squirted out there. Aye. Like you can kind of see it and you can kind of feel it. Like I don't want these edges to be peeling up. Because if it peels up, that means that those black lines are not adhering to the surface.
See that? This is just a, a little bit of my own sloppiness. And really, you know what? I should just, rather than try to touch it up or do anything to it, there's really nothing. To do about that. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with the hair dryer, just to, because it. I am gonna move it out of the way, and the more that I can get it to kind of settle a little bit, I think would be really helpful. I think this is good. Let's just, I'll just zoom out so you can. Oh, you can see that little mistake I made there. Okay. So now, before I move the t shirt, I just want to make sure I don't have any white paint or, or white Mod Podge on my fingers. It's a good idea to take that extra little second to either wash your hands or give them a good rub like I am. Just very nice and carefully move this to dry. Okay, perfect. So I want to come back to these and I want to start still a little bit wet under that one. That was the second one we did. It's like mostly dry. So let's hit this with the hair dryer and speed up the process.
Okay, so these are surprisingly still quite wet. One of the things I can feel as I move, this one I'm a little bit concerned about. This is their color Xerox with the uh, photo transfer. And as I move it, I can feel what appears to be a little bubble right here. You can almost hear that same snapping sound. So I'm afraid that there's gonna that this area did not adhere properly. So the other ones seem to be fine. So this is my theory that there's something with colored Im images that uh, doesn't quite transfer as well as black and white, but um, let me see. So which, what do I want to do with these other ones here? Let's do a, a um, a white onto a white t-shirt with regular Mod Podge. Or uh, we'll do, yeah, we'll do this one onto the white t-shirt. Big one, one white t-shirt. So we'll have a few of these on the go and we may not even be able to. So this time, because I'm putting white onto white t-shirt, I'm not so concerned about the uh, about doing a really nice job trimming the paper as I was when I was doing it onto the green t-shirt. So I can be way more kind of sloppy. So this one. This one will use the, the photo transfer onto a onto white t-shirt. Which was I've got a few white t-shirts here. Which ones are which? I was originally I have a whole bunch of uh, t-shirts. I was actually a t-shirt I was going to cut up for scraps that I was going to do this to. And then I was thinking to myself, why not actually use an, a little bit nicer t-shirt to do this on? Because if I do a nice enough job, I might actually want to wear it. Funny thing, eh? Now this is not a particularly great nice t-shirt. It's like a cheap t-shirt I think I got in a pack from Walmart or something but it doesn't have any holes or major stains on it which is kind of remarkable for me because basically everything I own has some paint on it I'm sure if I look at it close yeah okay there's a little bit of paint on the bottom so <laughs> everything I, I own has a little bit of paint on it Okay, so let's do the same sort of thing. I'm going to put some cardboard in here. And obviously also having the t-shirt itself, um, you know, as, as few major wrinkles, like this is, it's got a few wrinkles obviously, on it here, but if this was like a brand new t-shirt, and you know how like some t-shirts have like those big creases from the store where they're, they've really been, you know, recently folded. So little things I'm looking at, I'm just making sure are like the armpits roughly in the same place. Oops, go this way. Right, so they're kind of same here. That's pretty good. And we can put this right about here in the same location. Let's do this. Oh, 
Okay. So where should that be? How does that look pretty close to centered? I think so, roughly about... <laughs> I don't even use a tape measure, but you know, it was what it, like, I should use a little bit of a ruler just to show people how far that is from... What do the pros do here? They go... What's that? Two and a half inches down, or... Um, about five... Five and... 5.3 centimeters, or, you know, 5 centimeters or so from the collar. And we might as well just double check this one here. That's 4.5 centimeters and 2 and a quarter inches. So how are we looking at here? I'm, I've got three, that's two and a half, right there. I feel like everything I've done, I've done kind of backwards um, today. The, I sh I, I've started with the most difficult things and then worked my way to the easier ones, which is it's just enough to be able to scare everybody off. I go, oh, that looks too difficult for me. I'm not doing that. And then I then I do the easier one that uh, anyway. So let's uh, we'll yeah, we're gonna use. The, the photo transfer medium on this. So obviously I decided to use Takashi Murakami for this particular process because he is somebody that is really interested in fashion and clothing and the crossover between art and fashion. When he had his exhibition, uh, retro well, was it a retrospective? It wasn't a retrospective, um, but at the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles, uh, which I saw. Um, the, inside the gallery, he had a fully functional Louis Vuitton store boutique selling, you know, obviously things that he had created in collaboration with the company, which many, which upset many people. People were like, this is you know, crass, commercialism, you know, uh, it uh, exemplifies the very worst aspects of, of fine art, of, you know, rather than, like, you know, it's reinforcing the idea of art as a luxury, a luxury brand in and of itself. And... People didn't protest, but there was, you know, a sizable number of people who were not impressed. Okay. It didn't 
it doesn't bother me. I don't really get worked up with about that kind of thing when it comes to art. Like, I always like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess good for him. Uh, you know, if you can... If an, uh, if an artist can make a buck doing whatever they do, then by all, I'm all for it. I'm all, uh, so... I feel like I could have put more on here, but okay. So, be obviously because I'm painting, I've got wherever. If I get some white paint that squeezes out from underneath here onto the white shirt, well, I'm not really going to be too upset, right? Because it's going to be basically invisible. Remember when I was looking at the Spider-Man one and it's like, I can't I have no idea uh, how I which material did I, I used for this because I can't see it there anymore anyway, so okay, let's just press this in So when this is all done, I'll have kind of a white circle, a kind of halo around this whole thing. Like I probably could have put more on there. So we'll see. I probably, I mean, I, I probably could have put more of the Mod Podge on there. So hopefully, I got enough. I just remembering one thing I have done in the past is used uh, like binder clips or you could use paper clips just to kind of pull the fabric out uh, to avoid any kind of wrinkles underneath here. I'm just remembering I didn't do that today, obviously. And that could be helpful, especially if you did have a really wrinkly shirt. Okay. So, I'm going to move this out of the way as well. Okay. So, next, let's take the red shirt. I wonder if this is going to be too subtle on the red shirt. Because what I want to do now is I want to take this image and transfer it onto an, with the, the regular Mod Podge so that we see the red coming through. I wonder though it may work better on the gray. I know, Donna, you liked the red the most, but um, I think it might work a little bit nicer on the gray. Might be just a little bit too subtle on that. So. So I see, yeah, Donna, so you're saying um, that's what you used on the last one. So I did use the the photo transfer medium on both the green shirt and the white shirt because this this is 
the medium, this is ideally what you'd want to use. This works the best. It's it's the one that they made specifically for this purpose. Um, and I've generally seen it to have some of the best results. But... Um, uh, it's not to say that you... But I've also used the regular Mod Podge, and it does work quite well anyway. So I think that's... Um, I'm just going to use this on here, and I'm going to use the the black and white because so what we're going to be able to see is the white coming through this area, right? So rather, let's see, I could do, actually, you know what? I'm going to use the red one as well using, so we'll do both. We'll, we're going to have, a, I'm going to have four Takashi Murakami t-shirts after this. I'm going to be like a super fan after this, so you, you'll see all these different examples of okay so this one we are going to use yeah this one will be transparent okay so i'm just going to quickly that out. Now, even though, hmm, I'm going to give it just a, I'm not going to go too carefully in, but I am just going to kind of generally clean this up a little bit. I haven't even gotten to like the, the fun stuff, which is the wiping of the rubbing of the paper off the other surface, which is the messiest part. And the part that some people love and some people uh, don't have the patience for. So. For those of you that really like to pick at things, you know, you like to um, pick at labels on pop bottles or something, or constantly itching things, or... Our, my daughter really, our, our daughter is really into textures. I mean, she's a year and a half old. Uh, but uh, just this morning, I was wearing a, a hockey jersey. And she was sitting on my lap and just like her eyes were open wide as they could go while she was just sitting there scratching and picking at the texture of the fabric, which is admittedly, it was kind of I, I find myself doing, I guess, unconsciously all the time because it is kind of fun to touch, but... Uh, okay, get this out of the way. So that's kind of... This would be kind of... I like that big... You know, if I zoom back out... Oops, this way. I kind of... That would look pretty cool on this shirt, for sure. But I do want to try to use a slightly different process here. Um, just so you can see the difference here. So let's get this t-shirt all prepped. for government work, eh? Okay.
here. <clears throat> okay. So let's get the magazine. And this time we're gonna use the regular mod podge, right? So I'm gonna use this on here so that I just transfer the black lines onto the surface. The white of the paper is just going to um, disappear after I've finished rubbing this down, right? So let's just get a little bit more. I am, just before I forget, this is one of the, this is the color copy version of this, of the black and white. So, because I'm going to forget what this is. This is the, this is the black and white photocopier version of the logo. This is the color photocopy version of the black and white image. Right, so the color photocopier spit it out even though it's a purely black and white image. Ah, okay, so you see here, that's an example of me being sloppy. And um, okay. <clears throat> This is why you don't want to do this right on the t-shirt, just like I just did here. But uh, I'm just going to take some water and saturate this. And hopefully that will help. Um, it won't come out entirely. But it will dilute it a little bit, so that it won't be so. Again, what not to do featuring Michael Markowski. <laughs> um, okay. Just really saturating this. Nice, I wanna keep, make sure it's all wet. So that it, when it does transfer onto the canvas, it really sticks on there. So it's, you see where I kind of lifted it up, my thumb was there. Just want to make sure. Now I can pinch in here, because I'm not con really too super concerned about the white areas, because there's not really going to be any... ink that's going to transfer there. Okay. Again, the most important part is the black lines here, which are pretty close to this outside edge. So that's what needs to be sticking to the, this t-shirt.
sure everything is stuck on there really well. Feels good so far. Just gonna go around these edges, make sure that everything's nicely stuck. I don't, again, I don't, I'm not really worried at all if I get, you'll see there's little bits. Let's go zoom in. So you see how there's this little bit of acrylic that's scooted out underneath? That doesn't bother me at all. It'll hardly be noticeable. Same sort of thing with that little bit up there, but it's easier to fix that part. Just but if I start putting some water down here, I risk possibly the, the image not adhering to the surface very well. So this is going to result in a pretty subtle image. Which could be really cool, right? Like sometimes you want a t-shirt that's got a band logo or some kind of name or word mark on there but you don't want it to be super loud right you want it to just be kind of much more subtle so this is going to create that effect now afterwards you could certainly paint on it or do other things to it but uh, I'm pretty excited about this one I think uh, but we'll see <laughs> before I I don't want to speak too soon because, again, with this whole process is is it's it's kind of magic. Sometimes things work out really really well and you're super excited, and sometimes you're like, oh, well, that's weird. That's why did that happen? And it's the mystery of life. Okay, I also got a whole bunch. Like here's these tote bags that at school they were just throwing in the garbage and I, <laughs> I have a bad habit of pulling things out of the garbage but I thought like oh maybe I can take these and I could put images on here so maybe later on in today's episode because today's who knows how long I'll be here um, if I want I could try doing it on some tote bags Um, okay. The red one. Okay. So let's prep one more here. This will be the final one that I prep. And then we'll start doing some of the rubbing on here. So this one I'm going to leave a little bit more of a white edge around the outside. If this transfers properly, it could it will hopefully look really cool. And you'll also see the difference really clearly between the two different kinds of Mod Podge. I'm actually surprised that Mod Podge doesn't make a clear photo transfer medium. And they exist. I have another brand that is way more expensive on the shelf behind me here that I didn't use for today's just because it's a little more advanced and I'm trying to keep the supplies for this class to a minimum and to if I do include other things like these mediums today to to the cheapest possible oops Hopefully, okay, there's a little worrying glitch that happened there, but computer says I we shouldn't notice an interruption, so 
hopefully the stream continued. Okay. One last t-shirt. I knew I would need these one day. One day. Meanwhile, my wife is just standing there at the front door of the store like, just because there's t-shirts, cheap t-shirts, I'm gonna use them one day. I, pr I know I'm gonna need them for my classes. Uh, she just shakes her head. Uh, what are you gonna do? That's what are you gonna do when you marry an artist and just just have to take a deep sigh? <laughs> okay, two and a half. That's good there. By the way, this cardboard that I'm using, this is just the um, uh, kind of the the, the, the the last page in uh, like a watercolor tablet, or if you buy like a, a, a watercolor loose sheets, these these books. Here, I'll show you here in a second once I get this in. So this is like one of these big books of watercolor sheets that you paint on, and uh, when you're done, you're left with a board like this. And again, rather than throwing it out, <laughs> I keep it, and uh, today's a great day where I feel like I'm using some of the materials that I've been holding on to for the past 10 years. Which is, which is bad because then I it encourages me to pick up more junk okay so let's try to get this t-shirt here oh hi Laura nice to see you um Still haven't. My apologies. Responded to your email. <laughs> I, so I honestly I haven't even had a chance to read it, so nothing. Um, no, uh, please don't take that personally. Uh, just been a busy, busy, busy guy these days. So, in fact, my wife is helping me get the our next version of this class organized. Okay, so that's two and a half. That's perfect. Okay, so... Again... I'm just looking to... See if I can find the armpits right there. So these green lines are going to be a little bit crooked. You just have to ignore that. It's just about this being crooked. Or straight line, right? Um, so I'm going to use the photo transfer Mod Podge again. So that you're going to be able to see the different. This one 
is going so now all of the white of the paper is going to transfer the paper's not going to be there but the mod podge photo transfer medium will be so it will look white <laughs> when i okay so a funny story see when i put I put this cap on and I'm trying to get the paint to kind of come down. I close it down and I put my finger, importantly, on here so that I can go like that and the paint kind of shifts down. Many, many years ago in, in a lifetime long ago, I was a busboy at the Hard Rock Cafe in Calgary, Alberta. When there was a Hard Rock Cafe in Calgary, I don't I think it's long gone, down there on down in Eau Claire, downtown. And I remember, you know, one of the jobs of a busboy in a restaurant is to marry the ketchup bottles. And if you've never heard of what that is, then, and you've always wondered why ketchup bottles in restaurants are always full, it's because some kid who's being paid what, I don't know, $5 an hour is, their job is to take the ketchup bottles and transfer the half empty ones together to marry them to, so you might have five bottles that are, you know, have a little bit left at the end of the day. One person's job is to go and can, um, transfer them all so you might have one or two full bottles Right, but rather than opening up a whole new one. Anyway, I was up, you know, it's the kind of towards the end of the night, and they closed down the top part of the restaurant, and everybody's downstairs, and it was like two in the morning or something. And I'm doing my job up there, and uh, <laughs> take the bottle of uh, of ketchup, and I didn't properly secure the lid so I'm going like this and like this and then I go whoof, and the pop of the bottle comes off and ketchup goes all over the ceiling on down the wall and onto the floor this big stream of ketchup <laughs> and uh, and the ceilings were like you had to get a forklift or whatever a scissor lift to get all the way up to the top of that ceiling it was pretty high up there and uh, manager came by and was like, uh, and I, you know, minutes later, and, and I was just, and I'm cleaning up on the, I'm doing my best to clean up and sweating it out. And he's like, what, what on earth happened? And I'm like, I don't know, you know, like, obviously, some pretty wild customers, and things were pretty crazy there when it opened, I was there when it first opened, and that kind of stuff was the least, <laughs> the, the most harmless thing that happened there on a, on a daily night. Um, so, <laughs> I, I came back the next day, and it was gone. I don't know how they got it off that ceiling. They must have, somebody was poor bartender up there on, on a shaky ladder all night long um, anyway, there's prob I think that building is still there I don't know what's what's in there maybe there's some ketchup stain in that building no one has ever been able to explain there you go now the word is out I'm sure I'll get rounded up and thrown in ketchup jail. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of medium there. How does this... I think i just making matters worse, <laughs> trying to be clever, trying to, where my fingers were, trying to get a little bit of, of uh, Mod Podge back into that space. 
Okay. So the most important part, we start from the center, spreading any because we're also going to, we are going to have a little bit of that texture here. And I, I'm not spreading the the paint, just any, any um, bubbles, right? So I'm just trying to make sure I don't get any large bubbles trapped under here. And then I start working my way. Remember this, wherever, if, if I get any of this outside the lines, it's going to be white, right? There's basically like white paint underneath here. So I'm just wanting to be a little bit careful that I, I'm not, not overly cautious, but there's no harm in taking my time as I do this, right? And then after this is, I'm got this on here I'm gonna go back and we're gonna start peeling off the paper off everything we've done so far So I'm actually really excited about all of the t-shirts I've done so far. I'm really interested to see how well everything transferred. But I feel like I've done a pretty good job putting these on here. Okay. surprising like once you get down there and you can see where some of these areas are lifting it does a pretty good job of wanting to stick to the to the t-shirt I find it actually this the photo transfer medium sticks to the fabric a little bit quicker than the regular Mod Podge which is not surprising considering this is At least it claims to be specially made for doing what we're doing right now. I sometimes just wonder if it's just the same material just in a different package, but it does seem to work a little bit better. It's probably just an extra spoonful of some chemical. Okay. Boom. Move this, making sure my fingers are clean. Move this off to the side. I've got a lot of stuff now. Oops, I got my corner. Let's put this over here. Okay. These look good. Well, that's still a little wet underneath there. That's surprising. I'm gonna blast these with the the dryer.
Okay, so that looks good. I, there's a few places where I can kind of feel. I can hear this. I don't know if you can hear that at all, it's super subtle, but that tells me that there's this there's a bit of an air bubble in here, which makes me concerned that there's going to be a big gap in the image, and that we won't have anything transferred there. So, um, it happens. If, if, if miraculously an image is there, I'd be very, very, very surprised, but I, I, I don't expect to see anything. I'm just gonna clean up for a second here. Wow, all these messages in the chat. Let's just see. Um, ooh, Laura's uh, neck nerves are pinching. Um, my right two figures, but it's getting better day by day. Oh my goodness, I hope you, you feel better, Laura. Um, Irene says, we'll finish up supper time here. Catch you all later. Have a great weekend. Deborah says, hi, Laura. Better late than never. It's a good class. So glad you can make it. Um, Laura, balloons and thumbs and more balloons and hearts. I love you. Uh, Michael, you, you're working hard to teach us and always missing the best time to take the bath for your daughter. You are so down to earth. <laughs> Deborah says, Laura and Donna, I had my second shingles vaccine yesterday and have been suffering from muscle aches and chills. Could not miss this class or miss you folks. I could only watch tonight, though. Oh. Well, Deborah, I hope you, uh, that pain goes away. That's shingles. I've never had shingles, but I've known many people who've had. And from everything I know, it's a super painful. Yikes. Okay. So. Ah. Uh, Here's a bucket of water that I've got prepped. And I'm just, just gonna do a quick little tidy around here. Okay, so the next part, this again is, depending on who you ask, the most fun or the, the most frustrating, boring part of doing this whole process. I'm, I've got a bucket of water, I got a sponge, I got my fingers, which I'm gonna use for a bunch of rubbing. And I'm gonna get some rags out as well. Because I'm gonna to wanna to use these, you know, if there's water starting to build up all over the table, that can be a bit of a pain, right? You got, so any kind of cleanup I can do ahead of time to, to keep some of, uh, my space tidy and clean is, is appreciated. Okay, so now we're we are going to get some water, um, and it doesn't really matter if it's hot or cold. Uh, maybe room temperature, maybe ideal. I got a sponge here, and I'm gonna, just going to saturate these. Now I'm just thinking putting water on this blue is a bad idea because I'm going to rub that paint off. I should have, hmm, what I should have done, again, this is probably the title for this class, what I should have done is sealed it with some clear Mod Podge before I even got to this stage. Um, which I have done in the past and I've taught this class and I just had a brain fart, I guess. Okay, so you can see as I got them wet, now the image is reappearing back onto the other side. And then all I gotta do is, let's just zoom even closer into here. And I've got another viewpoint here. So I just have to rub my finger on here gently. Remember, this is the the uh, photo transfer Mod Podge. 
this is the this is this material All right so this is the material that is made specifically for transferring images doing exactly what we're doing right now I am doing this very lightly All right my finger often people make the mistake of going too fast and pressing too hard And if you go too fast, what ends up happening is sometimes you rub away the ink on the canvas here. So I've got all of this, these little, that's the paper that just came off, right? Is, I'll let this dry, and as it dries, you'll notice it, it sometimes goes a little bit foggy again. Right, so these nice dark black lines, they disappear, and I'm like, what's going on? What's happening? It's just because that, what's, that means is there's still some paper on top there that just needs to be rubbed away. So just keep your eye on that top one as I do this here. Some people prefer to use a, a rag, like a cloth and wipe, as opposed to the, your fingertip. Um, I would recommend your fingertip if you can do it because your fingertip you, is just way more sensitive like we, you can feel when you're kind of going a little bit too hard onto the surface and, and starting to take the ink away you know once you kind of get the hang of it you could certainly um, use a rag I guess or, or a sponge water back in here to saturate this paper. You'll see I'm kind of being careful not to rub the blue paint too much so that because I just put water on that blue paint and if I get too much on there I, I'll probably start to wipe that paint off even though it's dried a few days ago. I don't know it's probably been weeks ago that I put this on there. This is that area that I said was, I thought that there was a big air bubble under. It's working okay, but I'm a little suspicious right there. We will see. So you can see this one, you see just over that period of time how it's ghosted back out. That means there's still paper that needs to be rubbed away. Right. 
So what has happened here is the 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 medium is basically bonded to the ink on the paper. And so the ink from the photocopier or the printer has lifted off or is lifting off the paper as we rubbed it rub it away, leaving only the ink and the Mod Podge stuck to the surface of this canvas. turning out pretty good. It looks like there's a little area here where I've rubbed a little bit too much or the paint didn't, um, I didn't, there was, might have been a little air bubble there. If you find all these, these little things kind of drive you nuts, if you just let the painting dry, they wipe off really easily. Right? They're, they'll just be like little crumbs or, you know, like when you use an eraser. That's when they dry, they don't stick to the canvas anymore. So I, I, I'm pretty sure I need to do a little bit more rubbing in certain places here, but I'm just going to let this sit and dry for a few minutes while I do the other one, and you'll see the differences. All right, so this one was done with this Mod Podge, right? The matte medium, just the regular Mod Podge, the most easily af affordable, available form. Actually, I think the the gloss one is a little bit more expensive or is cheaper but uh, you know what all right so that soaking in there the images are starting to come through Really want to let the the paper, you know, the water do its thing. You don't like so. So I'm just gently rubbing on here, because that's another mistake people often make, is that they uh, they put water on there and they immediately just start really grinding away trying to get that image off, and it the paper's just not wet enough, and you're tearing the paper and with it it's pulling the ink away as well. So the water is going to do a lot of the work for you if you let it. this is I do feel like the paper on the pr on the previous one that I used the, the Mod Podge transfer medium I feel like that the paper came away easier I don't see that might, must just be perception because uh, 
can't see how the medium would affect the paper in any way, but... She's going to start using a different finger here. I just kind of feel like that one finger is starting to kind of get um, a little numb as I rub on it continuously for a while here. So this is why you really want the material, the, the Mod Podge, to be as dry as humanly possible before you start rubbing the paint or the paper away because if the Mod Podge is still wet then you're just sort of reawakening the Mod Podge and then it, nothing is going to be sticking to the surface right so it's really important the Mod Podge has an opportunity to cure as completely as possible that's why I, I mean I think they recommend waiting 24 hours or two hours or I can't remember what it says on the I'm sure if I read the instructions, it would. I would know. <laughs> but what fun is it to do anything with having read the instructions, right? So then as I do this, you can see I start rubbing away and the, and the line between, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no paper there anymore and it just starts to become kind of seamless. Right, as if it was like uh, printed directly onto the canvas. And if you remember the Vermeer painting that I was working on last week and I showed earlier this episode and I, I spent some time trying to put various different layers of Mod Podge over there just to get rid of that that edge oops I rubbed a little bit too much there it needs a little more water so little parts start of, of the ink can come off So this is like pretty meditative kind of uh, actions here. And I know there's some of you that look at this and are just like, oh my goodness, there's no way you're gonna catch me rubbing a canvas for like an hour or 20 minutes or whatever. Like, just don't have the patience for that. Versus, I also know that there's other people who look at this and think like, huh, well, that's kind of cool. I I, I could do this, sit down, put my favorite TV show, whatever, The Bachelor, or Dr. Phil on, and just have this kind of running in the background, put your favorite podcast on, and you can do this, and it's, oops, he tore a bit of the image away there. Some of this is falling apart. So I think that's a little bit because some of it hasn't fully dried under there. Now obviously I can, once it's there, I can paint over it. I can, um, I can cover it with other materials. I could collage things on top of it.
Okay, so we come back to this one. Let's get a little bit more. I think you, you get the idea, right? We're and, and the difference between these two, of course, right? That the one on the left, right? Here's these two different materials and the results that they've created. This one, we see there's the white background still there. And this one, we have, it's dried clear so we can see all the way through. Right? It might be, right now, it looks like there's a bit of a, of um, it looks a slightly different yellow than this one. There's a, a few reasons for that. One is there's still probably a little bit of paper that's clouding this and like almost tinting the paint, the the image. The other thing is, is that when this is wet, it's going to look a little bit cloudier and milkier. When it dries, it should be completely clear and, and transparent, right? So just going to spend what, another two minutes on this, and then I'll work on that larger one that we did. And then we'll do a little t-shirt. I'm actually surprised. This is the one. Remember, I said there was a little bit of a. I could hear that happening. I I was convinced that that was the paper that was um, uh, coming away from the surface. It looks like, weirdly enough, that the Mod Podge dried on the paper, but didn't stick to the to the canvas in that area. So. Not as good as I would have hoped, but not, but certainly better than the what is happening elsewhere here, where the paper there was a bubble, and we didn't get any. It's it. Uh, there's a lot of paper. A lot of the image didn't make it. Okay, so this I'm just going to set these aside because they're going to need to dry, and as they dry, we'll see the the image kind of get a little bit milkier again, and we can rub more of that paper off. I think probably the, the as we start working on the t-shirts, one of the questions that come up is, well, why not just throw it into the washing machine, let the washing machine deal with it? And that's a great question. The thing is, is that the washing machine, first of all, you probably don't want to put a bunch of paper in your washing machine. Um, and if you're going to do this, you, you should probably do it without putting any other clothing in the washing machine. Uh, if you decide to do that, which is against my recommendation anyway. Um, but the... Um, the washing machine is not as... Uh, as it, uh, subtle with the way it's going to remove the paper as we are being, right? We can be much more sensitive about this because sometimes people will, after they do this, seal it again, even on the, the clothes with a little another layer of Mod Podge and use the, the um, um, iron. Oops, look at that came. This is not wet enough for me to do this rubbing. I should just let that sit for... Um, yeah, like a washing machine's job is to is to get the the clothes as clean as possible as quickly as possible. And that's not how this works, right? We're being as subtle and slow. Right here, I'm just taking my hand and just gently rubbing it over the surface here and as the paper starts to break down. Like I would say, I'm kind of, like the pressure, amount of pressure I'm putting on here is 
what would be the... It's, it's basically like the amount of pressure I would put when I'm trying to turn a page in a magazine. Or swiping around on my computer or tablet, right? Or phone. Usually, once the, you just find a, a time, like all of a sudden right now, the paper just finally starts to fall apart, and then a bunch of pieces just start crumbling off. And it's actually that those pieces, as they crumble off, that help other parts crumble off, because they kind of act like, um, like a sandpaper or something. Which can be a good thing, or a bad thing. If you've got a lot of them, then they can be doing too much work. So let's just try using the sponge on here. The sponge is going to be more abrasive than my fingertips. But it might go a little bit faster. Just have to be kind of a little bit gentle. Yeah, I'm going... And that's still wet, right? That I should have blasted this with the... Ah! See, there's another gap. I should have put the hot air on this before I did this. But, you know, if the, if the purpose is just to transfer an image which you're going to paint over afterwards, which would have been my goal for this painting... Then it doesn't really matter if parts, little areas are, have gone, because I can just paint those things in with black anyway. I mean, like, look at all of this pulp. So that's a big mess there. That's a big fail. But what not to do? <laughs> Donna says I'm falling asleep watching you. <laughs> I do. I was thinking to myself, I should just be exporting some of these videos as like uh, the ASMR, the which is this whole genre of videos where people are like whispering quietly into the microphone and doing these because there's a whole group of people that really like very very quiet videos and, uh, <laughs> I can uh, might as well make an ASMR series here what does that stand for? Audio something. I think or sound or autos. I don't know. This. There's a lot of water underneath here. I think you get the point with this. Again. I should probably just let this thing dry. You can see that some of the ink is even moving around so much that I can even change that mouth a bit. I lost an eye. This one needs a lot more love, and the canvas was still quite, was still obviously, there was still some wet paint in here. So I'm just gonna put this one back down and let that dry. Let's just clean up a bit before we move on to a t-shirt here. Just dry all this 
off. Oh, Don says, Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Oh, I was way off. I thought A would be audio, S would be sound, obviously, but there you go. Proven wrong again. Okay, so just before I move on, again, I, I'm going to let these dry because there's some of this was, was also wet. And then finish them off. I might do a, an, like an update video to this particular episode later on. Let's put those there. Now, what was the first one? Did we do the green one first, I think? So let's take a look at this. We're going to blast it with the air. The other thing, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lift the shirt and then blast some air inside. Now, I've got my hands a little bit dirty. All of that paper. Again, ideally I would wait a good, uh, I would let, let it sit overnight and do this, but um, we're just going to do this right now. That tape on there obviously anymore. So we're going to get this wet, just to make sure I got a nice even surface here. Things are gonna, the water's gonna soak through, obviously, so it's gonna get wet. The rubbing is just. this image can actually go which I think is is fantastic right there's just so much more freedom in that sense band and people are just sitting around anyway sitting in the back of a van, which I've gone across the country a few times in a van with a band. Um, and you got a lot of free time. Canada's a big country. And some of those, you know, between Calgary and... Just here real quick. Or commenting that you're having problems too. I think it's either you of the black. It's kind of hard to see, but this little white edge right. Here. Ah! Look at that. So all this stuff can I can shake all that off. Okay. So this is a good example why you want that cardboard in there. I pull it out. You see how it's wet and some of it's stuck. That would have stuck to the back side. Um, 
so, but we'll see here as we start trying to rub this off. Let's soak in. Both of these were also using the slightly thicker paper. The red t-shirt I used was has the the black and white on the black and white photocopier paper, so it's thinner, which means it should come off a little bit easier because I don't I have just that little tiny bit less paper to rub off. But it doesn't seem to have made much of an effect in terms of the quality of the transfer at all. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do this one t-shirt now and we'll, we'll get as far as I can on it. And then I think this weekend I'll do, I'll film another episode where I kind of just show, I'll put them also, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe put them all in the wash as well. Um, one of the things that you can do after you've gotten all of this material off is seal it again with some Mod Podge so that it's, and, and then really let that dry for a couple of days so it's fully cured. Now you really wanna wait as long as possible before you put it in the washing machine because the washing machine is, is, you know, it's gonna pound it with hot water, assuming, or, or cold water, whatever kind of water you use and you know, like really good cleaning um, products that are meant to like get really tough stains out of the clothes, right? So you'd want to like really make sure that the that this acrylic is fully cured before you put it into the washing machine. You could also use the iron to help seal the 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 surface too so that less likely of anything kind of falling off I didn't do that to the remember the ones I showed at the very beginning of the episode the spider-man and the woodwards those ones I did not put any medium on afterwards I just finished this process wore them and then threw it in the laundry machine so I don't even think I used the the iron on them to be honest now that I think about it it's been years since I did that, so. saying kind of quit the video and, and joined again and it seems to be working fine again ah, it's one of the wonders of the internet why things behave the way they do sometimes and then I think to myself every time I'm, I'm get want to complain about the about uh, some of this stuff I think to myself you know <laughs> 10 years ago being able to do this was just would have been impossible <laughs> I mean, unless I had like a, you know, I was on a television station and had like all of the, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of technology to broadcast in that sense. When I was in graduate school in Los Angeles, my final artwork that I made for, for um, my graduation exhibit was whole bunch of drawings and then I produced my own radio play 
and about a detective who discovers a unseen fourth primary color and uh, I built my own pirate radio station you I had to buy all this technology and um, so that it could be broadcasting around the neighborhood and like that like today it would take me like 20 minutes to set up uh, like a feed like I mean I could just do it here on YouTube and people not only just in the neighborhood but anywhere in, on earth who have an internet connection could have tuned in and that was what 20 years ago well 18 years ago I think how times have changed So much more accessible to us than they've ever been before, which is super exciting. And the fact that you guys can be watching me sitting here doing this mundane activity for you know, no matter where you are on Earth, it just blows my mind. I'm, I'm teaching online. I mean, obviously, I'm teaching here, but. I also teach at uh, a university, and of course all the classes are online there at the moment anyway. And I have students in class, you have to do that, like it looks fine, or you're rubbing in one place over and over, and you're just actually just making things worse, you just need to kind of let it sit for a few minutes. Okay, let's gather up all of this. But you'll see when this dries, uh, this, what is right now kind of ghosted white, should be the same color as the t-shirt. It might be, so it might still have a little bit of this appearance right now where it's a little bit ghosted, which is not surprising because there is, it, it, there is a material there. It's just not as thick as... You know, it's, or it's, it's, it's like a transparent material, so, but there is material there. Okay, so let's... <laughs> That's the other side. And there might be a... I don't think... I'm not too concerned about any medium seeping through here and, and altering this color. I could have put kept that cardboard inside there, but whatever's in there, I'm sure... Hopefully, should have been dry enough by this point, right? So we have that. And then we have this. I've just been a few areas. It kind of fell apart a little bit. But I'm going to let both of them dry. And then we'll see what they look like. And then I'll rub on them again, including the other ones that are off to the side here drying. So, um, I think I'll just leave these up here on the table until I figure out a place to put them. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, Donna was trying to FaceTime with her granddaughter and just telling her we couldn't do this before she was born. Yeah, I mean, just being able to I rem do you remember the, how expensive phone bills used to be? I remember, oh my goodness, don't get me started. I, I remember I, once, when I, 20 years ago, when I was in school in Los Angeles, had a long distance girlfriend or relationship with a, with a girl who lived back in Calgary. I'm talking like hundreds of dollars a month in phone bills. Oh. Anyway, so <laughs> we're lucky to be living.
shoot. Okay, so... Ah, uh, no sound. <laughs> ah! Okay. So what I was just saying was... Uh, let me see. Making sure that's on. Okay. What, buddy? And we will see you in... In a couple of days, we'll see you on the weekend. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.